Welcome to another episode of Dental Talk 360, where we are here to give you information about all things dentistry. I'm Dr. Melanie Silvestrini. We have Dr. Barton Santos, Dr. Oscar Sanchez, and Dr. Alfredo Arauz. And we have a wonderful guest speaker today, an excellent dentist and dear friend of ours, Dr. Craig Spodak. He's a dentist, owner of Bulletproof Dental Podcast, and also owner of Spodak Dental Group in Delray, Florida. Today, we are going to be focusing and giving you insightful information with our guest speaker about single tooth versus comprehensive dentistry and why it's so important to understand the differences between the two. So I'm sure all of us have experienced this at some point in our career, probably do on a daily basis where a patient comes in and they might come in for a consultation or first time visit emergency and they want one thing sort of looked at when in reality, us as practitioners, we are trained to look at everything holistically. Now, we all know oral health is integral to systemic health. And so there's a lot to talk about with this. And Craig, would you mind elaborating on your experiences with this topic and how it has affected you as a provider, but also patients? So um, first of all, awesome to be here with all of you guys, all my, all, all my friends here. I'm pumped. This, this is great. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, when we get out of dental, dental school, we're all trained to some degree to focus on the exact problem that's presenting us. Right. Whether it's the broken tooth or the decayed area or the, you know, the gum infection, we all have a very myopic and uh, focused view of the mouth. And for all of you providers, you know, you've done considerable amounts of continuing education well beyond what was required. Mm -hmm. Most dentists do not do that. So most dentists stop their learning when they get out of school. So we're, this is not the normal dental environment that we're sitting in here. Um, so kudos to you for that. And what happens is when you start learning more about you know, full mouth reconstruction and understand the problem, you don't just see the small problem, you see the greater picture, you see the mouth, not just the tooth. So most dentists out there will see a patient who has wear or broken tooth and just say, you need that number, you know, number 30 fixed, we'll fix that for you. And they're typically pretty happy with that. But then six months later, they need number 18, the lower right. left molar fixed and right. so on and so forth. Well, then Which, the other one breaks number three yeah. that you just did. It. Yeah. Yeah. So they keep doing the same thing over and over again. And what, what the problem with our profession is, is that a patient can go to their family dentist and say, you just need a crown. Right. And then visit one of, you, one of you people and say, hey, there's a bigger problem here. There's crowding. There's wear. There's broken teeth. You've lost your vertical dimension. You've lost the height of your face. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why are you, why are you telling me this? It's $80,000 worth of work. The other person told me it's 1500. What do you, yeah, yeah. I like, providers. yeah, either the other guy's full of crap or you're trying to sell something. Yeah. So it's like, when you go to the medical doctor, you can go to a medical doctor and we all have gone there before. Like, what are you doing here? You're, you look fine. Get out of here. And then you go to an integrative medical professional and like, you know, are you as fit as you could be? You know, are you as healthy as you could be? Cause I think medicine is focused on getting people unsick. And dentistry is focusing on getting people, you know, well, I'm, I should say medicine is focused on getting people unsick. Good medicine gets people optimally healthy. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Love dentistry. That. So a, a, a family general dentist will be like, hey, no problems, no cavities, get out of here. When they see you guys, they say, hey, did you know that you're clenching and grinding? Did you, did you see these wear marks? You see the bone loss? You see all these things that are going to be a problem in five to 10 years. So it's a more proactive versus reactive exactly that's exactly what i was gonna say it's yeah. definitely a, a proactive result because when you look at everything and they're coming in with one broken tooth this hurts they just want to take a look at that sometimes they don't realize that the tooth above it has moved down yeah and it's in the way and restoring that one thing that's bothering them could cause more pain more damage and, and issues down the road joint pain and crowding that could then lead to teeth being pushed forward or bone loss and periodontal disease ultimately. So it's looking at everything holistically in order for us to treat the whole mouth and the whole person, which is the key in any aspect in dentistry, like in medicine, like you stated. What about you, Dr. Santos? Yeah, no, so I agree with what Dr. Craig said about you know medicine in general. It's, I'm saying, let me go to the ER, let me go to my primary care physician, let me get the antibiotics. Whereas being proactive, it's like, okay, I'm mm -hmm. fit, I feel healthy, but I pinch myself, I may have like 50% body fat, but my cholesterol is good, I'm fine, but am I living my best life? Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, it's like lifespan versus health span. Like I've been, I was going to a medical doctor for a really long time, and I said, "Listen, not to be cavalier, but I'm like, money's no object. You know, I can afford to spend a thousand dollars on the diagnostic test." I said, "Hey, doc, is there anything I can do to be better, more healthy?" He says, "Nothing. You're great." I go to the Cleveland Clinic to have an executive health uh, then physical, and they're like, "This is off. This is off. This is off." Yeah. Uh, carotid calcium score. So the problem is, is our consumer, our patient, is like. We don't know what they want. They're like, oh, this seems like a good dental office. I'll go here. They think dentistry is all standard. And it's the problem. Like if you just want to like some people are reactive. Some people want to fix their roof when the roof like starts leaking. Yeah. Other people want to know if the roof is going to leak and it's going to happen on freaking Thanksgiving. Let yeah. me fix it ahead of time because it's cheaper and easier to fix it beforehand. So people are different with their dental care. I'm having like deja vu from when Lemon Jello was there. He's like, there's a difference. Like if you need a place to stay. You can go stay at you know the cheap motel, right? But if you want the experience, you go to the Ritz Carlton. Correct. So there's different levels, but it's you know quality of life at that point. Um, it's... But it, it also has to do with the training, and it's something that you taught me like early on in my yeah. career. When you remember when you said and you drew it down, and you were like you drew a circle, and you were like, "This is what you know." Yeah. Uh -huh. This is what you don't know. <laughs> and then this is the area is what you don't know that you don't know. Right. Yeah. So right. when you get more training as a dentist, right. yeah. you start seeing things right. that you never saw before. So early right. in my career, I was, <laughs> you know, patient would come in, broken tooth. And my thing was, fix the broken tooth, because that's, that's what I was saying. Right. Saw. What caused it to break? Number one. Yeah. Problem fixed. Well, it was problem was also now, financially. But now party. when I look at it, I look at it like, why did the tooth break? The right. tooth shouldn't yeah. break. Exactly. Unless the bite is off, something is off. So that's so now I diagnose a little bit deeper and it takes a lot of dentists that initial start to like actually do a more comprehensive approach and also like compromise to an extent. Because when you go to when you go to a regular doctor and you have something they give you a treatment, they don't give you seven different options. Oh, you have cancer, but you can do this, or you know, you kind of get the treatment that you need. Mm -hmm. In dentistry is the same thing. So when I get patients and sometimes they come in for something small, but they've been paying all this money over the last five years. They've been spending the forty thousand dollars that we're gonna spend anyways. Yeah. They spend to do a single teeth and it's what I tell them. If I fix your issue today, you're gonna be okay. But then tomorrow's gonna be down. Tomorrow's gonna be down and day after is gonna be that one. So if we do everything at once, it's gonna be more money, but it's something that's going to last you 30 years. When you divide 30 mm -hmm. years by what you pay for today, sure. that's a dinner a week. Yeah, I get that, but there's so, an issue in the sense where there's a lot of dentists that are fearful that them presenting what every what that patient it's needs as a whole, that that patient is just going to walk out the door. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's so, so <laughs> and what they don't realize, and what they don't realize is there's ways to kind of go around that. You know, always look at the acute problem or the problem that they're there for. Tell exactly. them that we're going to take care of that. However. There's ways of managing that problem in steps. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people in our profession, unfortunately, what they are is they're fearful that the patient is going to leave, fearful what the reaction is going to be, and they're getting new patients coming in the door and patients, more patients going out the door right. because they're fearful of that. And there's one more thing too. Yeah. Dentists love to talk crap about each other. A hundred percent. So you present what they need. You know, I always say like, you know what shape a dental firing squad is, right? It's a circle. Yeah. We will all shoot each other in the back. So you tell them what they need. They go over to that guy down the street. Like, oh, what are you talking about? You just need, just need a cleaning and a little bit of bonding. Yeah. And the patient's like, screw you, one star Google review for you. Exactly. So that's the other thing. And it's, and, it's a, and it's a scary situation to be in because as we all know, all of us here, if we get a set of x-rays, we'll treatment plan things differently. Obviously, with our education, we're going to see similar paths. Right. We're going to go into a similar location. However, there's so many practitioners out there, and depending on their training levels and what they see day to day, yeah. right? Yeah. Because if all you do are implants, you're going to treatment plan an implant. Right. Whereas maybe you could save that tooth. Mm -hmm. Right. There's hammer. Every exactly. hundred <laughs> percent. So, but ultimately you need to be able to have the wherewithal to look at your patient and, and know that what you're telling them is what they need. Yeah. Right. So what are some of the courses Freddie, that has helped you and maybe all you guys to kind of like get you the training that you need? Cause I think that a lot of dentists, like especially younger dentists that come up to me and ask me, they don't know. They've never taken any courses. Yeah. They're taking the courses. They work for a corporate. They're taking the courses that the corporate offers. Right. It's just kind of like the training is they're doctrinated in a certain so, way. But what are some of the places, courses and things that you've taken that have helped you get yourself? So in the beginning of the, my career, I feel that it was very imperative that I took spear and then I eventually moved on to Coys, and then I eventually did, you know, FMR and YC. And then 
as you go in your career, I always will tell <clears throat> younger docs, master something to the best of your abilities and then step up, mm -hmm. master that step up. Because if you try to do everything all at once, you're never going to put in the reps to be able to really hyper focus on what you learned to then excel in that one item. So if you're learning about veneers, try to do as many veneers as you can to get really, really good at it. Understand quadrant dentistry first, then understand how to do full mouth dentistry because yeah. you need to be able to treat and excel at doing a single tooth restoration perfectly and execute that every single time before you could do 28 of them or how many you're going to do, right? You need to be able to hyper-focus and be perfect every time and know that when you're going to, when that patient's in the chair, they're lucky to be in the chair with you yeah. because you're going to give them the best, mm -hmm. right? So as far as courses are concerned, there's levels of courses, right? But ultimately it's being able to practice and put in the reps of what you learn because it serves you no good in taking a hundred thousand dollars worth of CE if you're never going to do it. No, you're exactly. just going to be an encyclopedia. I think, so, that, but I also think that you need to have a strong <laughs> like basis. Understood. Before, you know, mm -hmm. so I remember like when we first started, when I graduated, one of the things that he told me is like, take coys. Mm -hmm. Well, one. occlusion's the base. Occlusion's the, base. The, the problem is, is when you first graduate, and first of all, what you guys are talking about is 95% of dentists out there will never take the courses you've taken. So let's just be real. Yeah. So the, if the patients are listening to this, they go to their family dentist, they are not gonna get the same level of care. And I wanna create a distinction that you brought up with, uh, I think Dr. Lemangelo, like Rich Carlton. It's not about perception, quality, and luxury. This is not a luxury segment because there is luxury and there's, people cannot have a lot of money, but want long-term health care. So, or long-term beneficial dental care, I should say. So it's, I don't want to boil it down as to something as simple as Rich Carlton luxury experience, stuff like that. Experience is important, but if I'm breaking my teeth and I'm going to just the regular dentist, which is 95% of us out there, I'm going to get an FMR, like Oscar just said, one tooth at a time. But when you do $40,000 with the dentistry over a 15 year period, you built a house with no blueprint, building the bathroom first, and it's all jacked up. Your, you, your teeth look like colored corn because every time they did a, <laughs> every time they did a, a, a tooth, they picked the color where you were at the time. So you, you literally spent the same money. So my thought is that doing it right is actually not more expensive. It's actually probably less expensive than doing yeah. it in the long run. In the long run. Yeah. yeah. In the long run. Just right. like your health. Like you could just watch your disease progress and wait till you have diabetes. By the time medical professionals diagnose diabetes, it's too late. Yeah. But you could, if you're going to the proper doctor, you could see your A1C start to creep up over five, six years and fix it. Like our threshold for treatment is too high. We wait till someone falls apart. Like when you're clear aligner conversation the other day, amazing conversation, I loved it all, but it was centered around crowded teeth. What about tooth wear? By yeah, the time, you know, so- into the next thing that we wanted to talk about, you know, waiting on treating a patient with crowding tooth wear, collapse a, a bite versus trying to get that orthodontics and Visline or what have you done in order to correct everything in order to avoid problems. But we're doing a bad job as dentists because when I meet patients over the last 23 years and I say, I tell them what's going on. I tell a 25 year old girl, like, see how much tooth you've lost. You scan them, you show them how wide their teeth have gotten because teeth are pyramid shaped. As you, as you wear them, they get fatter, buckling, you know, f facial to tongue, uh, front. Front, I know that. Yeah, front and back. I mean, I, <laughs> back to front, front to back. I know there's, I know there's a rule there. But anyway, they're getting wider, and what's happening is you're telling a patient, it's 25 years old. Look, you've worn off 20% of your tooth structure, and by and large, the most common answer I get is no one has ever told me that. Right. Yep. I meet 40 year old people. No one's ever told me that. So we, our profession, we are sucking at telling people the long term effects of their care. Right. Just like the same as medical doctors. So we're great at short term stuff. Because when you get out of school, you have tons of debt, you want to start making money, you want to learn the three-minute endo, the five-minute implant. You want to do that because you can do that course last, uh, you know, last week, and then this week, bump your production by $1,500 you know, or $5,000. So show me the compensation, I'll show you the outcome. Right. Occlusion is slow, but it's a st stable foundation for which everything's built on. But it's not sexy, and you can't get that ROI immediately. So what do most people do you know, in corporate? Just 
a five minute root canal, a five minute implant, right. single tooth dentistry, right. cause it's economically right. beneficial and for I've them. Had, and I've experienced this in my career because I worked at different places where their mentality was short minded. Yeah. 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 Fix the problem. Yeah. And I've come up and the patients come in and I presented them a treatment plan that was more that they came in for. And then the owner or whatever has gotten like, Hey, you know, this patient walked out. This, but now that has been, I've been years in it. I've been seeing this patient that has come back to me. I mean, like, you know what? I saved the right amount. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But they were like, I feel like you were the only dentist that told me something that nobody else did. And I explained it correctly. Like, and I understood why my tooth broke. Now I understand why this. And they walked away that day because they weren't prepared for that. They came in for something small. They got something big. The problem at hand was fixed because you always have to take care of that. But they came back and they were like, now I'm ready to start the streaming because I see what you're saying. I see that. I noticed my teeth are small. You you put that in my head. Mm -hmm. Now I look at my teeth and I'm like, holy crap. Like, look at my 20 year old photo. Look at my photo now. I, I can barely see my teeth, my lips, my... So they start realizing it. So it's all about educating the patient. And, and the taking time. the time with the exactly. patient is what builds trust as well. Exactly. But a lot of doctors and a lot of, you talk about an owner there. Let's just say the owner's like, Oscar, what the hell did you do, man? You let that person walk out. Like, yeah, you gave them a $40,000 right. treatment plan, but right. they did nothing. What are you doing? Like, you got to get something yeah. today. Yeah. So there's pressure from patients, from owners, from corporate. There's so yeah. much pressure in dentistry that's forcing us to not really take the very best care of the patient. So it's slower, like you have to talk. I mean, a consult could be for an FMR, could be what, an hour, yeah. 45 well, minutes? Do if, a, if you yeah. gave a you know in-depth treatment plan comprehensively yeah. and a That's patient a says, hey, I actually don't really want to go about it this way. Yeah. Great. What do you do? Well, listen, I think it's incumbent upon us as, as professionals to point out what is the consequence of their choices. Right. Frankly speaking, if patients know what we know, they make better decisions. So you, you meet various providers in your life, whether it's your, like your roofer, for example. Some guy comes over like, hey, you don't need to worry about that, man. I'll just put a little freaking caulk up there. You're great. And there's another guy that's like, hey, there's an underlying problem and water seeping in. Do you want to fix things quick and cheap and not long lasting? Or do you want to do this over and over and over again? You know, uh, or, you know, so we really have to just provide patients with an education. It's our job primarily to say, hey, here's what you don't know. Here's the long term effects of what you're choosing. And hey, I get it. If you want to just fix this and you at least you heard it right. legally, we're protected. We've done a good service exactly. for the patient. I mean, listen, there's certain things that I know I should be doing. I just don't want to do it. So just give me the patch, you know, I, I... And, and usually most of these patients that have had this type of treatment, once you mention it to them, they start realizing they're like, you're right. Like I paid for this tooth last right. year. Now this one broke. Right. I paid for this one last year. Now this one broke. Now... So they start seeing it. So once right. You but they treat... haven't been able to do anything. They're like, just fixing yeah. a tooth. They because, haven't been able to restore the dentist. Right. I've been telling them the rest is fine. All you got to do yeah. is put a crown. And there's a domino effect. Exactly. Yeah. As, as things progressively worsen, the cost of dentistry gets higher, right? right? So sometimes the treatment might be X, but if you wait 10, 15, seven okay. years, it might be X times five right. or X times 10. Tell the patient that if we start treatment today, it'll be this investment. <laughs> this would be the most minimal investment now moving forward. It'll only yeah. get worse. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just only money, but time too, because you got to crack tooth, it's either root canal or implant, but you really need that FMR. If we do all the teeth now, we can get everything done in, you know, two, three appointments. But if you do two by two by two by two, yeah. 20 appointments, how many hours? It's yeah. just like- But you're never gonna get the result. So like, you know, when you are trying to rebuild your mouth one tooth at a time, you can't change anything. You can't change color, shape, yeah. size of oh, the vertical body. dimension, you yeah. can't do anything. So the problem is what, what we're all really talking about is we're fighting a current of dentists, other dentists. Our profession is not adequately trained and we're not doing the right thing. Just like medicine, the same thing. Medicine, the doc, the medical doctor has two minutes with you. You look fine, you're gonna get out of here. Yeah. Get out of yeah. here. Listen you know, like laugh. you look, yeah, you, you nothing, you're not sick yet. Yeah. Call me when you get sick. Yeah. So by the time you get sick, it's too late. Versus like, hey, I'm looking at your A1C over the last 10 years. It's slowly creeping up. By the time you're 55, you have diabetes. Do you wanna call me when you have diabetes or you wanna fix it now? So it's it's a really backward system, and, and dentistry is part and of that. It's the same in Perio. Like yeah. I'll give you a life example. Of mine. I had a patient yesterday that presented to our office that was 35 years old that had moderate bone loss everywhere, and yeah. he's been telling me, "Yeah, I know I have a history of gum disease. I've been told, but they kept doing the same thing over and over and over." Yeah. And 
My thing is, if it hasn't worked over 10, 15, 20 years, why are you still doing that? Why not either one, refer that patient to a specialist that yeah. could look at the situation or refer to another specialist that maybe does treatment like laser assisted therapy? Can I tell you the answer? Because compensation drives behavior. And when you send that patient out of your office, you lose the money. And money is just motivates people. And it's motivating a lot of our colleagues to not treat a patient. Because they think if I send that down the street to the person that has laser, who invested, what, 150 grand for a freaking laser? Yeah. That patient's not coming back. Yeah. So we are actually incentivized to keep the patient in our in our building, in our in our care, even though it's not the right thing. Sure. It's really unfortunate. But it, it makes it harder on us though that treat holistically because then we're getting a patient and that's fairly broken. And yeah. Now we have to put together back the pieces. Yeah. Right. And know that that's a hard one to fix. Yeah. And then you have to have. And it could be overwhelming for the patient. Speaking of that, I was in the console room talking to this patient in particular for an hour and a half, yeah. going over everything in detail. And then ultimately him saying, you are the only person that has ever given me the options that you're giving me and talk to me honest yeah. and truthful about my problems. And thank you. By the and way, what you just said makes me sad. I'm happy that you're doing it and kudos to you and you guys. But it makes me really sad for this for the patients in our profession that we are getting these. You're the only one. You're the only one. You're the only. One. We're not doing well as a as a group. So pa we're not we're not telling patients about the long term effects of their their me problems. Too, because I had one of our colleagues in the office come in and saw me staring at these radiographs before I even walked into the classroom, and they're like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "I'm just." sad that I'm going to have to go in there and I'm happy that I'm able to help this person now. But ultimately I'm sad that this got here. You're right. And yeah. now it's on me. So not only yeah. does it put a lot of pressure on the practitioner, but it also makes me want to help this person even more, right? Cause it's the only way that's going to make us as a profession better. You know, getting this person that's lost hope and now all of a sudden giving them this ray of light that something can be done potentially to help them get to where they need to be. That's the biggest thing for me, right? It, but I knew in my heart that the best thing for that patient was that he was in my care at that time because I have the training to do so. Exactly, however, you have the training to do it. However, mm -hmm. let's say the person went across the street or what right. have you and got the can kept kicking and they kept yeah. doing the same treatment. Or they just want to take nothing the teeth out of Because like he said, yeah. you know? That's a big problem too, guys. So a lot of people are being trained to do implants, single unit <laughs> right. implants. Everything is so yeah. so imagine like, see of periodontal disease number eight falls out the front tooth falls out they put an implant there so they have implant tooth implant and it's like well, they don't realize it's that it's been all the periodontium is isn't good you can't put an implant in there i know but it's just so, it's, so we're treating people are getting really sophisticated at single tooth dentistry yeah. guides and all this great stuff so the mm -hmm. average dentist that's educating himself is educating himself to do really high level single tooth dentistry yeah, but yeah. never taking at the the you'll see with, like the implant crown that's this big right because they put the implant where the bone loss right was, and the other but you can't you can't fix that now yeah. now that breaks uh, and then it's it's, it's, a, it's uh, a can we talk about something happy this is yeah. really sad for me <laughs> <laughs> no we're just jacking <laughs> patients up yeah. um, we did talk a lot about finances stay tuned for our next episode Craig and I dive deep into that. And uh, you can find us on Instagram, Dental Talk 360. Again, I'm Dr. Melanie Silvestrini at Dr. Melanie Rosalia. I'm Dr. Alfredo Aruz at Dr. Fetty. What's up? I'm Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Dr. Oscar Sanchez at uh, Dentistry by Oscar. And I'm Dr. Santos at DJ to Dr. King Santos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't know we're dropping handles. <laughs> If you can check out Bulletproof Dental Practice. Yes. Yeah. At Bulletproof Dental Practice. Yeah.